All right, Big Bang. Today is Monday. It is April 1st. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. Uh, Snake Draft Monday. We're joined on Zoom by Frank the Tank and Chris Clummer. Uh, today's draft, as you saw in the title, will be the best sports records. Wait a second. What? You said unbreakable. I mean, it's I kind said, of. The, I thought unbreakable, too. Yeah, it's yeah. Kind, of, kind of the same thing. So. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think Best so. means like most prestigious. And yeah. I think there are prestigious records that could be broken. I agree with Chief. All right, unbreakable then. My All right. apologies. Yes. A little under the weather. Uh, Frank, how are we doing? It's great to see you. Great to have you. Yep. So this is unbreakable records, right? Yes. Correct. Yeah, yeah, unbreakable. My apologies. Fuck me. Uh, yeah. How, for Clemmer, how are we? What's going on? Doing great. It's opening day. We're taping this. I'm so excited. Baseball's back. Let's go. I'm, I woke up with a smile on my face. I'm so happy. Uh, do you echo that sentiment, Frank? Uh, I look a little bit with dread with the season. <laughs> yeah. I'm right there with you, Tank. I am right there with you. I, I will say this is the first piece, and I'm only wearing this because a friend made it for me, of White Sox merchandise or apparel that I have worn since July of last summer, and I feel a little dirty putting it on right now. Yeah, I, will, I will tell you this, honestly. I think uh, the White Sox are a much bigger mess than the Mets. They I very know. much are tank. They that, and that, and Frank automatically would say that the Mets are the biggest mess of on the planet, no matter like baseball or otherwise. The fact that he said the White Sox are a bigger mess than the Mets really shows how big of a mess the White Sox are. That's a fact. I wish you get this damn uh, blue green screen out of here and get a better backdrop. Yeah, that's all good, right, Frank. Frank. Don't worry good, about Frank. it. Good, Frank. Huh, maybe that does look a little better. What room is he no. in? There you go, Frank. It looks a lot better. It looks there a lot go. better. Don't say Frank. He doesn't care about the aesthetics. And there's the okay. He cares. Oh, looks uh, mostly better. <laughs> it looks slightly better. Yeah, it does. Um, all right, we could get into the order. We could start doing this thing. Uh, Clummer, our producer Lance is number one through five behind his back. What number is it? Four. No. Frank. Five. No. Chief. Three. No. Dave. Two. Yes. I'll take first. All right. Wait sex. Dave is first. Uh, one through four to me. I'm going to say four. No. Uh, Clummer. One. Yes. What's, what's I'll take two. All right. Uh, one through three, Frankie. Three. Yep. I'll take three. Uh, one or two, Chief. One. No. Two. Yeah. Uh, I might as well just take the wrap around then. Uh, all right. So the order is White Sox, Dave, Clemmer, Tank, Chief, Eddie. Uh, all right. Without further ado, the unbreakable sports records draft. White Sox, Dave, lead us off. All right. Before we get into it, though, we got to talk about Factor. You guys know Factor. It's the best way to eat healthy because eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready to eat meals. Every fresh, never frozen meal is chef crafted dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 options to choose from with Factor every week, including a uh, calorie smart, a protein plus, and keto. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay to help you stay fueled, excuse me, feeling good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today. Get after your goals. Two-minute meals, uh, the fuel-ups, uh, they, they get you there fast with Factors restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat and eat whenever you are ready. Uh, pancakes, smoothies, and more. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday bites, and more. No meal prep, no prep, no mess, no any of that. Uh, factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. And uh, flexible for your schedule. That's another great thing about them. You get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Head to factormeals.com slash dogwalk50 and use code dogwalk50 to get 50% off. That's code dogwalk50 at factormeals.com slash dogwalk50 to get 50% off. Great deal. Factor's great. Like they say, you just pop it in stress-free. You're good to go. Uh, heat and eat. Um, all right, let's get into the draft. So I think there are a lot that can compete for the 1-1 one, one overall pick. What I am juggling in my head right now is to go with one that literally cannot be broken, that is kind of boring or 
something that more than likely will not ever be broken because of how the game has evolved. So I'm going to go with the latter on that one. And I think this guy, um, you could you could pick multiple records of his and draft it 1-1 overall. But I am going to go with 749 complete games by Cy Young. That will never, ever, ever be broken. The evolution of baseball pitchers just don't pitch anymore. Not near what they even did 15 years ago, let alone 30 years ago, let alone a hundred years ago and that record just will never be broken even though it could technically be broken but it won't I, yeah I it won't you, Dave. yeah there's it no way yeah there's 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 absolutely no way who get fucking look if he gets 749 starts now the, 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 the True. he's <laughs> got the record for starts and it's only like 808 or something oh, so geez. he had he had a decision in like uh 98 percent of his starts that's yeah. absurd. They were built different back then. B- built different. Did did UCLs not exist in the no. in the in the early aughts of the? Yeah, but I didn't throw hundreds? as hard back then either. So that, that yeah, was less stress on the elbow. So much harder now. Right. They were right. built to go the whole game, so they were they were never going full out. Not max effort, right? But they're still getting out. Still yeah, getting yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's weird. Well, they I would... also play with the same ball. So like, let's say a ball was fouled off. They were trying to recover the ball. Especially in the 1800s, and they would use that same ball. So the ball wouldn't go as far either. That's why they called it, it the dead ball. Dead era. ball era. Yeah, it was beat beat to shit. It was probably had like a little give to it after an after an entire game, kind of like a 16 inch. But uh, yeah, that record will never be broken, um, ever. And Frank, you got anything on Cy Young? The world lives. Yeah, I would think it's Cy Young too. Cy Young wins. Cy Young losses. Anything Cy Young. All those Cy Young records will never fall. How many years did he pitch? I don't um, even know. Obviously, the award, the he, you know. uh, his career started in eighteen ninety. It ended like around nineteen thirteen. Uh, so he pitched about 23, 24 years. Good lord! He was on the first ever World Series winning team, the nineteen oh three. Eighteen ninety to nineteen eleven. Actually, he started. He actually years. started game one of the uh, nineteen oh three World Series. Yeah, I think you're right, Frank. Yeah, against the Giants, right? Uh, no, Pirates. Deacon Pirates, Trump. you're right. Best, I mean, he won nine game series. He won thirty games or more three times in his life. I mean, that uh, t- even sniffing 20. We have Cy Young winners winning 12, 13 games now, I feel like. I love that we yeah. got two historians here. That was yeah, yeah. That's, that that will be good for that's this clutch. for sure. Yeah. For sure. But, yeah, that's that's my pick. Not as sexy as I would like it to be, but it's, it's a good pick. It's It'll never, ever, 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 ever be broken. Uh, Clemmer, you're up. I'm going to go with the basketball one. Um, I'm going to go with Wilt Chamberlain. 50.4 points per game. He did it 1961-62. I don't think anyone's ever going to get 50 points a game average uh, throughout an entire NBA season. See, this I is... don't know. I, I think it is. I think a guy could come along and <laughs> the way the NBA <laughs> That's is now exactly it. with the threes and the lack of defense that I think you could, and if he was on, let's say, a bad team, you know, where he's taking, he's he's There's chucker. Shots a game. I, I think it. Average I think fifty a game. I mean, I think it's. I think it's more possible than the Cy Young. That's see with the evolution of sports, like any sport is gearing towards more offense. So sure. a record like this, while it'll never be broken in our lifetimes, more than likely, it is in theory. Something I mean, that could happen. Three, four years ago, I would have agreed with you, Clemmer. The way the league yeah. seems to be going now. It's, it's all just, sports. Yeah, and you see sports. guys, and you see certain guys, like we've had guys get 70 points in a game. Like, could someone do that enough times over the course of a year to get to 50? I think I think in theory it's possible. I think Zach Eady breaks this next year. Haven't seen, <laughs> have we seen anyone get 40? When's the last time someone got 40 points per game through an average of an entire yeah. season? Probably uh, Harden probably was close. He was like 35, 36 one year, wasn't he? So we're talking. You're right, 15 you know, points. That's true. Yeah. We're talking 15 more points a game. And right now we're in an offensive juggernaut with guys throwing up threes left and right. Yeah, Luke, um, Luca I, I leads I don't, the I don't league right 50, now. Like What's 30, he at? 33.9. 33 points. 30, yeah. So we need, we need to find, we somehow find more than 16 points a game. It'll probably won't be broken anytime soon, if ever, but. I could see like an evolution in basketball where like there's a four point play or something or a half court shot eventually. Like that baseball is never going to have a an era again where pitchers are starting on 3 days rest, winning 30 games plus a year, pitching 300 innings a year, you know, that's that that was what I weighed personally in this draft. Frank, do you sure. see it? 
Do you see it, Frank? No, I, I agree with Clemmer. It's the, the fact that uh, I, just, I just think that the teams just don't function that way, and I just don't see how what, anyone can get 50 points per game. Yeah, I think it's harder than you guys are. No, I'm not. I, I think it's very hard. I think it's much more possible than the Cy Young. But like I said, if there's a guy to do it, it's Zach Eady, So Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what's the troll here? What I don't do mean. What's the troll? He's a big, like Wilt. Okay. Skilled big. Mm. Uh, Tank, you're up. I am going to go uh, Wayne Gretzky total NHL yeah. points. Oh. I mean, this record is so impressive. He's got – now, his goal record is going to fall to uh, Ovechkin. That's that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. But he has uh, – people t- talk uh, focus on the, the uh, 894 goals. He has 1,963 career assists, and uh, which is a total of the 2,857 points, which is almost – the second closest to him is Yarmer Yager, who is more than 900 away. 900. You could take his goals, in, right? In yeah. Point. Yeah. The, this is the, my like favorite like Gretzky stat is if he never scored a goal, he'd still be the all-time yeah. leading scorer cuz wow. his assists and be, and he'd, yeah. And he'd, yeah, if he had zero goals, he would be the all-time <laughs> all-time leading scorer by 40 uh, by 42 points yep. over Yarmir Yager. Because he has 1900 uh, 1963 career assists. And, uh, yeah, Wayne Gretzky's uh, point scoring record and assist record probably yeah. for that matter. Well, his goal record is going to fall, but not the assists, not the points. Right, and if you look at um, if you look at Yager, I mean, Yager did take a little hiatus over to Russia for like three years, mm-hmm. but Yager played until he was forty five, and he's still like a billion, n- yeah. no, not even remotely close. Like the the, the Gretzky numbers just. They blow your <laughs> mind when you stop and think about it. It's and he scored. Gretzky and pe- had some mind-boggling seasons. Like he had one season where he had like ninety-six goals and two hundred and fifteen assists. Yeah, that's absurd. Yeah, he had he had season? like a two he had a two hundred and twenty-one point season. I think was might have been his high, but he um it, it, his numbers they just don't make sense. What's the point leader in a season getting now? Like around? Uh, probably yeah. now, like because it, it's been more offensive. But like Patrick Kane, when he won it, he had like a hundred and three points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? That's what I figured. Like, and that, but that was yeah. like eight, nine years ago. Now you're probably they looking get, at like one forty yeah, points. Leader oh, now get okay. uh, like one twenty, one thirty. Uh, yeah. Uh, last year, I think Connor McDavid like approached one forty. Yeah. Like okay. M- McDavid is like McDavid's. F- unbelievable now is there a chance that the game changes like we're talking about with ba- with basketball right that, i don't i don't think i don't think there's anything they could do no like it, the scoring is up and they've they've already changed the rules a little bit where they don't have like the in the crease rule anymore they took away the red line um you know i i suppose that pass that's what i meant by taking yeah. away the red oh, line okay um <laughs> I was trying to sound hockey smart. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that doesn't ever really work out for you. It doesn't. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, it's... but yeah, I don't, I don't. There, there could be like some tweaks, but like nothing that's gonna allow right. that to happen. They'd have to like. I mean, it's not like it's not like we have. Uh, uh, the, the, and you know why they did the two line? Why they got rid of the two line? Why they allowed the two line pass? Don't you? Why is that? Because they were uh, pissed off that the Devils were dominating. Everybody. Oh yeah, that is true. <laughs> they had the old left wing lock defense. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, the neutral zone trap, which yep. everyone just like everyone would watch the Devils. The Devils would score one goal in the first period, and and it would be one nothing in the third period, and then the Devils would get that second goal, and everyone would just go uh, go home because the Devils never gonna blow it. Yeah, the, the Devils. The Devils tried. The Devils almost killed the NHL. They like forced. No, they didn't. Yes, they yes. made the NHL better. It's all Frank. <laughs> they almost that hockey from like ninety nine until the lockout was like the Devils were awesome. They were the best at it, but it was hard to watch. It was like the clutch and grab <laughs> NHL, like Frank saying it's one nothing. Marty Brodeur, Scott Stevens, they Niedermeyer, they had great teams, but they were you were like, man, I really hope they don't make like a deep run of the playoffs because then I'm gonna have to watch a lot of Devils games. And that's they not went to the be... finals three times in four years, yep. and. Uh... Except for uh, the Ray Bork year, yep, uh, they lost that one in Game Seven, so they could have won three cups in four years. Yeah, they were they were a they were a great great team for the era for sure. But like I would, I miss those Devils. 
Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Or, I don't. <laughs> I, I loved – I was always hoping it would be somebody else because, like, you had great teams in the West, like Detroit, Dallas. Dallas was a little bit like, like the Devils in that era. But Detroit and Colorado were, like, awesome to watch. I, I loved I loved 95 when uh, when the, the, the Devils swept the Red Wings. It was a big upset. And yep. Scott Stevens looked at the Devil, uh, 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 threw down Larry Arnold, and then looked over at the Red Wings and went, you're next. Yeah. He was like, he's the scariest hockey player of all time, I think. <laughs> all right. Uh, Gretzky, NHL points. Great pick. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you were hoping it would get to you, Chief, but uh, you're up. I actually think it's the assist record is sneaky. I I like that one better because we, we talked about it a little bit, so I'll take it here. Oh, wow. Okay. So Gretzky all-time assist is 1,963. That like like we said, if he never scored a goal, he's still the all time league scorer. In order, I think the number is like in order to approach that record, you'd have to average ninety eight assists for like ten years or something, or something like that. And there's only been three guys in the last I think fifteen years who have approached that number. Like, and that's what you'd have to average. Okay, that's like a career high for almost anybody ever is to have that, to have 98 assists. His assists are, are just, it's unspeakable. Like the connections he had with Yari Curry, you know, a little brief stint with Brett Hull. And the other thing I want to say about Gretzky for the fucking Frankie Borellis of the world who say he wouldn't be good in today's NHL, he <laughs> played in the, in the era in the late 90s where the Devils were trying to ruin hockey, and he was still putting up over 100 points a year. So Gretzky did it in – as an older guy in a in like a, their dead ball era in their kind of yeah like the clutch and grab mm-hmm. dead puck era we'll call it and was still putting up points like top 3 in the league in scoring at you know 36 years old so Gretzky to me is he is and then another thing about Gretzky if you hear him on chicklets I've watched him in these different documentaries he has all these records in the Stanley Cups and he's a, like one of the greatest athletes who ever play and he's able to talk about everything he's done without sounding like he's bragging at all. It's like a very unique skill trait where he just like, but it's not like false humility either. He just kind of like mm-hmm. talks about it. And uh, so I, I love Wayne Gretzky. The The connection with him and Biz is just hilarious to me because they just seem like the two total most opposite guys of all time in the league. Uh, so that makes, makes the TNT broadcast great. So Gretzky assists 1,963 uh, is my pick. So far, I think all of these could have gone one one overall. Sands Clemmers. Okay. Not off to a hot start, that Clemmer. <laughs> there's, there's a few picks left there, Dave. I don't think it's a one round draft. No, it's not. Last not at I all. Checked. Not at all. Not at all. Um, all right. To me, this is another thing where the format has changed so much, but it's just impossible. Uh, would be UCLA basketball seven straight titles. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's yeah. impossible to win a one-loss elimination tournament seven times in a row. It, <laughs> pretty, yeah, it's, it's this. It, Do you know what the second place record is? Consecutively, two? yeah. Two? Is it Florida? Two. two? It's two. Yeah. yeah so two. like Duke, Duke's, Duke's done it. Florida, Florida did, did it. it. Uh, UConn might do it this year. UConn could do it. Yeah. Um, uh, Cincinnati did it in the sixties. Okay. There you go. I think there's like five. A and M, now known as Oklahoma State, did it in the forties. Okay. Your brain, Frank. Is, yeah, what is wrong with you, Frank? That's remarkable. Um, He's incredible. What is right with him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need to tap what into some of right that. My memory you? stinks. Uh, but, yeah, so having having seven and then the next closest is two, that is an unbreakable record. It's unbreakable. You know, yeah. you and realize I th- the circumstances have changed so much, too. Back then, only one bid per conference. Tournaments were like 25 teams. Yep. So you didn't have to play uh, six games. You had to go to a, a gauntlet of six, six games to win it. And it was, and, uh, it was true. And back then regionals. it was all regionalized. Yeah, it was true. So, so like the play, West, they didn't they play didn't, anyone. Yeah, there was no, no, there was no good teams in the West but them. So they basically had a clear path to the Final Four. Now that they throw the seeds everywhere, everywhere, yeah, it's so much tougher to even like uh, get to the Sweet Sixteen every year. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. It's it'll it'll and you could keep guys for four years. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, you too. could you could just kind of have a steady. The roster to- turnover itself it's, makes it almost right. impossible. Yeah, yeah. And now you have the NILs, 
Yep. It's just like now it's 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 impossible. The transfer portal. It, yeah. I mean, in theory, it's possible, but it's also impossible. Yeah. Good pick. Yeah. Um, all right, kick off the second round. Uh, might not be the sexiest, but it's also one of the most famous, and uh, it's Joe DiMaggio, 56-game hit streak. Um, I'd be interested if uh, sharper baseball guys could give me an argument of why it will be broken, but I, I don't I don't see it at this juncture. It's like possible but impossible. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it is like one of those records that when a guy starts sniffing around, it like the captiv- pressure. It ca- the, well, yeah. and it captivates the nation. It's the cutaway. Yeah, it's the cutaway. Uh, the most, the one example of the that was it. Luis Castillo on the Marlins, like eighteen ish yeah, years ago. Right. Paul Molitor came the closest. Molitor had a Molitor. I don't right. took, what do remember a lot of his seven. Hold on, thirty nine. Forty four. Pete Rose, nineteen seventy eight. Thank you. Um. So here's the, here's why I think this is a really harder one to break than ever before with so much pressure to guys to get walks now you're seeing guys get less and less opportunities to hit like they're looking walk first some guys so you know look at batting average look at the top batting averages in the league like, it's way down compared to what it was 20 30 years ago guys aren't hitting 360 anymore so like mm-hmm. you're not seeing guys get multiple hit games as much as they used to because we have so many more walks mixed in so i don't I don't know if this will get broken in my lifetime. One day, yeah, a guy gets hot enough, sure, but I don't I don't know. I'm starting to run out of years for that one. I would have said that if someone would have done it in our lifetime, like th- up until today, it would have been Ichiro. Yep. What, what was his record? Probably at 30-ish, maybe? I have no <laughs> idea if he even probably. got close to that, but I would guess he probably uh, had a 30-ish game. Luis Casillo, like I said, what was he? Yeah, Ichiro's longest ever was 27 games. 27, yeah. That it was so not even sounds, not, not even halfway. Close. Yeah. Yeah. Um Arias, what did he do last year when he was uh flirting with four hundred the first half of the year? Did oh, he have yeah. anything I, like that? I don't know if he had a long hitting streak though. I don't know if he did either. But yeah, yeah it's but it's Arias pretty is fucking, the best contact hitter in baseball. By so far, if anyone's yeah. gonna do it this year, it would be him, I guess. But even saying it's just so hard to do. It's so hard to get thirty in a row. Dude, he he hit three fifty four last year. Do you remember? Like in, until recent years, two hundred hits was like it, it would happen pretty regularly. I would say he only had two hundred and three last year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's you know guys aren't getting as many played uh, right. as many bats as they used to because of the walks. Yep. Yeah. You know, uh, I remember when. Uh, Paul Molitor had a sitting streak. It got to 39, and uh, the uh, last game, it was an extra running game, and Rick Manning got a walk-off single at Milwaukee. got booed because Paul Molitor was on deck. Uh, <laughs> that's funny, Frank. And he was at what, Frank? What, what was he? 39. 39? That would have been 39, yeah. He got booed for well, a walk-off. Who would have 40 if he got oh, That would have been 40, so he, he did have 39? Yeah. Crazy. That's a way to break it. Uh, so yeah, Joey D is uh, my pick. Uh, back to you, Chief. I'll go with Pete Rose hits four thousand two hundred fifty six. That one, like the guy played for twenty four years. So similar to what you guys are saying with the DiMaggio hit streak, to be able to do it consistently for twenty four years, get the right amount of at bats, not be so focused on walks. Nobody has really come close now it feels like uh, what uh, one guy did one kind guy kind of did who ichiro suzuki he has the yeah, all-time ha- professional hit well, record i don't count japan of course that's fine but it just proves that it could happen that's that's my argument against your pick is what i'm saying yeah i i i think that one can fall especially yeah <sighs> this is the worst pick in the draft by far no no me. way it no is way. check out Check out a guy like Robin Hill, <clears throat> retired very young. Would he have gotten to four, four, two, five, six? No. Retired very gotten... young. He played for 20 years. Right, because he started at 17, but he retired young. Robin Yount retired young. That means he retired at 37. That he that's, still had juice in the young. tank. If okay. He played for six or seven more years. Imagine how many he would have come. He would have had like 38, 3900 hits. And he would. And Robin Yount's not the greatest player of all time by any stretch. I'm just showing that the Robin Yount example proves that it could happen. I. I think that argument works against you, actually, because you're saying he retired so young. Let's say he retired at 37. He had 31, 31, 42. Yeah. <laughs> right. So he'd have to have 200 more hits 
200 or 200 hits for at least five more years right that's just not going to happen until a guy's 42 years old in this day and age it's just not going to happen the robin young example proves that even a guy that's not the greatest contact or even of a generation could have if he played for a long amount of time could have come awfully close Derek jeter had 3600 hits right Derek Jeter had yeah Jeter was Jeter Jeter, what? Yeah. Jeter, Jeter had thirty four hundred so he was eight hundred off he also played twenty years like it's right. I he think the blow his ankle out he he could have gotten another two four hundred more hits I'm just showing that guys Ichiro guys have come kind of close but that's like, what that's what happens when you age is that your bat slows down and you do blow your ankle out well you not do. necessarily I disagree with that I disagree with that very much Tony Gwynn Wade Boggs they could get a hit no matter what that's not why they had to retire their bodies broke down they got sore they couldn't play defense anymore Tony but the bat doesn't slow down for these contact guys Tony Gwynn was 1100 hits off he played for 20 years that's yes. what I mean like we're talking about some of the greatest hitters of all time who aren't in my opinion, even that close. A thousand more hits after twenty years of trying to Starling do Castro it. was pacing for the hit hit mark for a second there. I I You're gonna say Starling Castro no, to me? I I'm Yeah, not, he started off his career with like five years of two hundred hits. Yeah. You know, what happened to him? He was a shithead is what happened to him. But like there are there will be someone I would say relatively soon that walks in as a twenty year old. There are two guys ever with over four thousand hits. But I'm, I'm that it's an insanely impressive record. I don't think it's as unbreakable as a lot of other picks that will be picked in the within the rest of this draft. Maybe of if you everything we've said so far, this is by far the most achievable. I I think so. I think I I think fifty points is. It's one. It's an argument. And I don't know. I mean, that's, I don't know. That's, that's just silly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tank, you're up. Okay, I'm uh, going to go back to MLB here. And uh, Ricky Henderson, 1,406 career stolen bases. Oh, no, Frank. I don't like this pick. I don't like all. this one either, Frank. Nobody teams are starting. To, no, they teams do. are starting they, again. Last year, everyone stole. That's crazy. Teams are stealing like Nobody's crazy again, in. Frank. When's the last time someone stole a hundred bases? It's been a long time. But when, before last year, when was the last time someone stole seventy? Like the stolen bases. These you rules realize now, that Henderson has a record by almost five hundred over Lou Brock. I'm with you, Frank. Good pick, Frank. Thousand. Nobody else has a thousand. He has. Over fourteen hundred career stolen bases. If somebody gets to it, I'll be shocked if somebody gets to a thousand. Because look what look what happens to base stealers. Base stealers slow down. Their knees give out. Their leg their legs give out. Someone's you're telling me someone's going to steal fourteen hundred career bases. Ricky Henderson's record is untouchable. He's got the record by five hundred. But Frank, look at Acuna. Acuna had 37 steals in 2019. He had 73 last year. Guys are getting literally twice as many stolen bases as they did before the rule change last year. Yeah, but I I think I I I if someone steals 100 bases again in a season, Ricky Henderson sold 100 bases like six times in his career. I think you're going to see a guy steal 100 bases in the next three years. Until I, see I think it, that's I, a I, actual I, not. That's a nice little thought project. I wouldn't be surprised either, Clum. I wouldn't be surprised if it's this year with Acuna. Me either. I just, I just see, and I don't, I don't see anyone touching fourteen hundred career stolen bases, especially that he has a record by five hundred. Now, I too. He also played for fucking forever. Yeah, he did. Too. That is true. The one, one thing in Frank's uh, defense, I'll say, is that teams, even though they are stealing bases again, they're still shying away from the contact first singles hitters that are going to steal second steal third those guys, guys still are, are few more, and though. far between but guys are walking more so they're getting on first base regardless yeah but it's it it's it they just it, the bodies don't hold up to do it that's another thing that's it so you're gonna have to have someone who who's able to still be fast for 20 years here's the thing the bigger record. bases too no I don't, I don't. No one's gonna even get a thousand. No one's even gonna top Lou Brock. Oh, I don't know, Frank. I, I, I think you're wrong. Frank, the I, stolen bases numbers exploded the yeah. last few years. 
Before I the rule change, Frank, I would have agreed with you. But now... I don't see it. I don't see anyone... Probably not, but maybe. That, I think that's the argument. Why, why were stolen bases so much more of a thing in that era? Uh, artificial turf. Um, folk, uh, teams' philosophies, yeah. um, guys like Vince Coleman, Vinny who maybe wasn't a very good player, <laughs> Rock, heavily valued. Yeah. Back then, uh, it was all contact. Uh, there were a lot more hit and runs. There were yep. the ballparks were deeper, uh, and uh, there was a free running edge. Uh, basically, uh, Billy Martin became manager of the A's in nineteen eighty. Said, "Run, Ricky, run, go steal, run, uh, Ricky, run." Yeah. yeah, go steal, go steal as many bases as you can. Yeah. And uh, now, nowadays, if a player gets thrown out, they're going to get that red light there. They're going to say, "Okay, you can't run." Yeah, yeah. I think it's better. Like I, I, I love the stolen base play as a fan, just watching it. So with the oh, yeah. with the pitch clock rule change, like I think I think it's a better product when guys are moving on the bases. So I, I am somebody who hopes that the game changes, that this record will fall. But I don't. I, I'm more on tank side. And it's just fun to have those players in the game. Like yeah. you like the Juan Pierre's, you like yeah. those guys who it's like, all right, he's a speed. Billy, yeah. But sad Nick, like those guys are like, all right, well. Anytime Scotty Pods got on, you're kind of on the edge of your seat a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Like he, Dave Roberts. Like, he's going, yeah. he's going, yeah. he's going, he's going. It yeah. creates like players who weren't that interesting to be interesting. Right. At, at the stadium, when you see someone at first takes off, you immediately, oh. you get out of your seat and you're like, oh, he's going, he's going. Oh, yeah. and, yeah. and like you the know? little chess match, he's looking over. Yep, you know, yep. Over. It's cat yeah. and mouse it's, game. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Like I, I hope there's more thirty thirty guys and go forward. more to more to Clem's point. You can only throw over the first. What is it? Twice now before. Yeah, and the third time. Yeah, you nail him. the third time you're kind of like, oh, he can't throw, and if he does, he has to pick me off, or he has I get to pick me off. Yeah, right. so there's the more points. To, and the pickoff rules and the larger yeah. bases, guys. You're gonna see guys run even more this year than last year because now they know it's successful. Right. I love the stolen base, so I'm excited about it. Me too, Clemmer. You're up. All right, uh, I'm going to go with uh, Johnny Vandermeer. Um, Johnny Vandermeer uh, pitched two no hitters in 1938 back to back. No one's going to throw three no hitters in a row. Uh, I'm pretty confident of that. So uh, I'm I'm going to go with Johnny Vandermeer. What about if Brendan Fraser gets uh, like signs with the team or something? That's, yeah, it's Nebraska. That's right. Yeah, three three no three no hitters in a row. Uh, Complete game no hitters, I think, would be pretty tough to do in this era. So uh, I'm pretty confident no one will, will touch Johnny Vandermeer's record or at least break it. Maybe he'll get tied, but it'll never be broken. After Burley's perfect game, uh, uh, his next start against the Twins, he took another perfect game into like the sixth or fifth or sixth inning, and it was fucking wild. And then he got in that last inning, he pitched, he gave up like a five spot. But uh, <laughs> that was really cool to watch, I remember. But yeah, that, that'll never be broken. I like this pick a lot better than your first one, Clem. Oh, good. I'm glad I got your approval today. Yeah. I keep calling him Clem, too. You're Clem, me Clemmer. Off. I know. I can't have that. But Clemmer sounds like a nickname. It does yeah, sound it sounds like, like a man. hockey nickname. Uh, you like this one, no, Frank? My certificate. Yeah, I could. Uh, because every time every time there's no hitter, the, uh, the first person they bring up is Johnny Vandermeer. And sure enough, there's that single. And then, I mean, uh, I mean tying it. <laughs> tying it would set the world on fire. Yeah, it would. It would. White Sox, Dave, you're up. Um, I am going to go to the gridiron for this one. And this one, unless they change the length of the field, it physically cannot be broken. I'm going with Antonio Cromartie's 109.9-yard return touchdown. It's the longest in NFL history, and it physically cannot be broken because of the length of the field. That's what I was talking about prior to starting. Is like this? No one remembers this, really. But it physically cannot be broken. What was what was Hester's against in the when he caught the field goal? Uh, I, I think that was against the Giants. I think it was Dante Hall think, had a, the Va next record at one hundred and nine. I think Vasher was like one hundred and nine too. Yeah, yeah, Vasher was one hundred and nine. I want to yeah. say, but like if you look at at the replay of this Cromartie return, there's zero space between the edge of the out of bounds line and and his his shoe when he returned that touchdown. It can't be broken. Okay. You're up again. Checkmate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Checkmate can't argue with you, Dave. <laughs> You're up again. Um, and what and here's another one that literally will never be broken. And so Wilt Chamberlain record, he averaged forty eight point five minutes per game in 
uh, the 61-62 season that he played every minute of every game, and then there was a few overtime games mixed in to give him that extra half minute a game. No one's ever going to do that again. I think that could be done. Yeah, no, probably not. Not with load management. Yeah, yeah load management. Yeah. 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 Load management is fucking bullshit. It is bullshit, but Unless it's, it's, it's the truth. It's right. a load of bullshit, but it exists. Uh, I was watching the, uh, the Knicks game uh, last night, and they won to, they, they beat the Raptors by 40. They're not going to put to keep a player on the floor when you're up uh, uh, 25 with five minutes left. I suppose. Let alone, uh, I mean, they're going to uh, – Back then, back then you just played. There, there was no taking players out for blowouts. Mm-hmm. Now, 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 now it's a big blowout score. They're going to take him out, and every player, every player gets a a, a two minute uh, rest in the, the first half. That's crazy. I didn't come out of the game ever for one minute. Yes. Of the, it must have basketball must have just been so easy for him. Yeah, because he's yeah. probably he's probably a head taller than basically everybody. How tall was he? Bill Ross seven one. Okay. Yeah. These big guys labor, dude. Yeah, but he was also wasn't Chamberlain like a really good track athlete too. Yeah. So like he like he was just a he was a freaking nature. Yeah. Well, I got ED average in forty nine per game. So. <laughs> okay. What is your deal with ED today? Breaks. I'm just a Zach ED fan. Uh, Clummer, you're up. Okay, so this, I, I don't know, I want to be fair here. So you can do baseball records before 1901 or after 1901. Before 1901, it gets kind of crazy. Um, either way, I'm taking this as innings pitched in a season. A guy named Will White in 1879 threw 680 innings. Um, Ed Walsh <laughs> in 1908 threw 464. So I'll take whichever one you guys think is more fair. I don't want to. I think that. Uh... Baseball uh, uh, delineates the modern era as beginning in 1901. Yeah. I agree with you, Frank. So I'm fine with the Ed Walsh 464 innings pitch then. Either one's never getting sniffed for as long as time. Ed Walsh, yeah. man. That guy. <laughs> that guy. Yeah. So they, and the White Sox, do they have to do, do they actually do, uh, find a way to honor Ed Walsh some way? Uh, all I know about Ed Walsh is that there's a – facility in the west suburbs of chicago that the white Sox and bulls both co-sponsor and they have a big ass painting of ed walsh in that facility i don't know anything i else mean they didn't wear numbers back then but uh, they should at least put like ed walsh's name up or yeah something at the, at the uh, stadium eddie walsh he, could fucking sling it dude he might have his number retired they didn't have they numbers. Numbers or numbers. name retired or something he might be in their version. He should have a uh, plaque or something. Or something, yeah. I'm, I'm, he's got to, yeah. He's why the White Sox won the 1906 World Series. I didn't even know they won the 1906 World Series, Frank. Do you know who they beat in 1906? The Cubs. Yep. I actually, I do remember hearing that, yeah. On the back of Eddie Walsh, dude, that bionic arm. Yeah. 464, that, dude. That Terminator <laughs> arm. What a guy. That T-1000 arm. I wonder if Cusack knows him. <laughs> He wore his jersey. Yeah, he did. Uh, Tank, wore you're up. jersey, pal. Uh, you know, a lot of these, uh, it looks like baseball, this is going to be a baseball-heavy draft. I'm going to go, uh, he, uh, I'm going to go uh, Ty Cobb, lifetime, 366 batting average. Yep. We already talk about how batting average is down and how when someone even like approaches like a 350, it's a story. He hit 366 over a 20-year career. I mean, it's just. I mean, uh, the, the next closest is Roger Hornsby, three fifty eight, who played in the same, who played in the uh, basically same era. And third is Joe, ja- is Shula Joe Jackson at three fifty six. I mean, all the top, all the top, the highest player uh, in the last like uh, hundred years is Ted Williams. Everyone that's in this top six, and uh, Ted Williams is seventh. All these in the top six all played prior to 1920. Well, Ty Cobb also played that. And uh, Hornsby played into the 30s and Cobb played into 27. But most of these players are turn of the century and earlier. Like, and uh, Ty Cobb, 366 batting average. And the gloves, the gloves he had were, like, hard to catch back then. Uh, balls bounce on pebbles and everything. So just the feeling is better. The pitching is better. And, and uh 
nobody's going to ever get 366 batting average for an entire MLB career again. I got a dumb question I should know the answer to. I think both of you might know the answer to it. How many games do you have to play to qualify for a career leader? It varies. Yeah, that you see different marks for that. Some say like 5,000 plate appearances. Um, in, in baseball, it's averaging three at bats per game for the season, right? Is that it? 3.1 plate appearances. So plate I think it comes down yeah. to like 503. It's something, like, like, it's it something weird like that because TA had like 504 plate appearances the year he won the batting crown and he like needed to play the last few games to get it, I remember. So yeah, it's something well, like that. If you have a big enough lead, you don't need to hit that. So let's say you have 501 plate appearances, but you're like so way ahead of everybody else. They can factor those other two plate appearances out and you still fall. Okay, That's okay, okay. I got you. Yeah, that'll never be broken, though. Good pick, Frank. It was on my list. Chief. I'm going Nolan Ryan strikeouts. So 5,714. He's 1,000 above anybody else. He pitched for 27 years. Uh, you know, we've already talked about load management. Pitchers don't get the amount of starts, the amount mm -hmm. of innings uh, that they that they used to. And this is a guy, like, there are – I, I respect the old, old uh, timers that you guys are picking. I wanted to have a guy that I had seen. And I like one of my earliest memories watching SportsCenter was Nolan Ryan feeding knuckle sandwiches <laughs> to, to, uh, to, to Ventura. And I was like, this guy's unbelievable. And he's old as hell. I just I watched that documentary about him. It was like facing Nolan yeah. on a uh, on a flight recently. Uh, it's just it just is unfathomable to have a guy pitch for twenty seven years. I would, I would bet that if you gave him a, a winter workout, typical <laughs> off season right now, that he could get outs in a major league game. He threw that first pitch a couple of years ago and he clocked eighty six, I think it was, and it was obviously without warm up or he was yeah. in jeans and shit. He could he could Freak. still ramp it up to low nineties and get outs at yeah. a somewhat effective level, which is absurd considering how many miles are on his arm and his age. Yeah, and then you think about like the guy, the great ones that are right behind him on the list. Which guys that we grew up with, Randy Johnson, mm -hmm. Roger Clemens. He had three something, right? Uh, Randy Johnson had 4,875. Again, played for 22 yeah. years. Clemens, 24 years, 4,672. So it's just like, even like, so it's like you think about these like strikeout kings that we like grew up with that got the innings that were like all time great, yeah. known for strikeouts. They're not even sniffing that. What I mean, is Verlander so at right now? Uh, Verlander is because he's still chugging along and he's, he's up there in age and he doesn't look to be slowing down. He is pitched for 18 years. He's 41 years old. He has 3,342 strikeouts. So he could may he's probably got 4,000 within reach and that's still 1,200 off. What's that? He's so I'm saying that he's, when he he's does like hang 20, up, he's like 2,400 off right now. 2,400. Yeah, I'm saying he's got 4,000 total. So he's still going to yeah. be off by, yeah, it's, yeah. It, that never, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I, I'll i pump the brakes a tiny bit here. First okay. off, you brought up Randy Johnson, which is a great example. Remember, Randy Johnson got a very late start. Yeah, he, he did. He a, did. He wasn't a major league pitcher really until he was 25, um, a regular, getting regular innings. The other thing is there's talk of baseball changing some of the roster rules. So they're talking about maybe you, they're limiting how many pitchers you can carry. And they're talking about maybe bringing it down to 12 or even as low as 11 because they want starters to go deeper in games. And batters are striking out at a higher rate than ever before. I'm not saying this record's going to be broken in my lifetime. I don't think it will be. But I can see somewhat of a path where something like this could be challenged like because guys strike out so much and if guys start pitching. Wait, wait a second, though. that They're going to – how how could they do that? How could they limit the amount of pitchers you're allowed they to They already carry? are. Yeah. They already are. It's 13 now? Why, why would the PA yes. allow that? Because For, guys still have jobs. You still have twenty six man roster now. Just more hitters on the on the I bench. Guess, than I guess, but it, that, the loogie got fucked. Yeah, but yeah, definitely big time. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like you you could. I don't know. Well, it's a different discussion. Well, just think about day. this: if he gets five, if, if anyone gets five thousand, there's still more than seven hundred away. Yeah, right. It's crazy. Yeah. And it, it's a crazy. Yeah. But guys struck out three hundred guys. Like when I was growing up, guy, you never saw that, that was like the magic three, mark three hundred for yeah. a, for the majority of my like youth yeah and now it's 200 it's already down 100 well, well guys strike out 200 quite a bit guys are striking out a ton now no like, i i know that but like 200 is a threshold it used to be 300 for like the best 
Pedro Mar- Pedro Martinez got over and and to me he's the best pitcher I've ever seen. Yeah, he, the greatest one I've ever seen. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got over 300 strikeouts in his career twice. He did yep. it in 1997 for the Expos and then 99 for the Red Sox, and that's it. So like that's what I mean. So even like yeah. you know like. When you have when you have five out pitches like he did, mm-hmm. it's still hard to get to that number. I don't think it'd be broken in, in our lifetimes, but I'm just saying of some of these, I don't see a path at all. Like the innings one, I don't see a path at all for that. This I could potentially see a path. A That's Randy fair. Johnson type starting his career at 20, maybe throwing more innings because they'd have less pitchers on the roster, and then maybe you can start to begin to challenge it. I'm very curious to see how Paul Skeens is gonna his career pans out like if i could fast forward 20 years i like because to me he looks like his physical build is nolan ryan he has got tree trunk legs and his fastball is 100 miles an hour he dots it brandy or uh nolan ryan was wild and he puts zero effort into that fastball meaning and that to me that says he could last a lot longer because he's putting less stress on his arm so i remember they said that about mark Pryor too Stop. Yeah, Mark Pryor had the weird. But they, they, they yeah. that was like the thing. They're like, oh, his, his mechanics are perfect. flawless, flawless, yeah. flawless. Yeah. All right, it's to me. Um, I'm taking the Iron Man streak, and I know people are going to poke holes in it, but I'm still taking it. 16 years straight, over 16 years yeah. straight, uh, not missing a Major League Baseball game is insane. Cal Ripken Jr., uh, 2,632. So. Uh, I'm sure someone will have a problem with it, but why would so anybody here's, the, have here's a... my only gripe with it, which I think it's a perfectly <laughs> fine thing. I think it's a very good pick, Eddie. When I was growing up and when Frank was growing up, we were told all the time there's <laughs> one record to be broken. Lou Gehrig's Luke record, record, record will never be broken. We heard this our entire childhood. So I always like, whenever I hear it never be broken, I always kind of flinch a little bit because that's what we heard for our whole childhood, right, Frank? Yeah, the difference is this, though. I think. Uh, I think what happened was uh, Ripken got in, uh, got enough momentum, got to 1990, and then they finally got, oh, he's, you know what, if he continues to do this, he'll break the record. And uh, it, it, and uh, that's how it happened. I think uh, I think now someone like year two, year three, I think if someone plays like two, three years in a row without missing a game, that would be a story. Uh, and, uh, and then they had to start basically the rookie year. Which yeah, Griffin and did. and did. to Which Frank's Griffin point, did. like you almost have to start a player's career saying, "Hey, we're going to gun for that record," because you just get off days baked into your your week at this point, really. You know, so a lot of soft tissue injuries. Yeah, players are pussies now, comparatively. And to there was a bench brawl like around 1993, 92. With the Seattle Mariners, where Ripken hyperextended his knee, the next day got rained out. If that game didn't get rained out, he may not have been able to play. What if he wasn't banging Costner's wife or whatever? That too. Yeah. <laughs> well, was How's that around? story go? Costner was banging his wife. Or something like that, yeah. Yeah, it was Costner was banging Ripken's wife. And they had a power outage. Uh, yeah, yeah, at El Real Stadium. Uh, is there Arts. any? Has there been any stroke of val- like validity to that story or no? Uh, I, don't I don't even think care. So. Yeah, it's one of those things. That's I a just great blindly baseball lore story. Believe. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Cal Ripken's Iron Man streak. Uh, my second pick. A little outside the box, but I don't think Joey Chestnut's seventy-six hot dogs and buns will ever be broken. I think Joey could do it. He hasn't been able to get it yet. Well, it, it, they shortened it from twelve to ten, or what? It, they well, that, took time off of it. Yeah, that's so more that, point to my re- that, right. That's more it, reason. I don't think. I don't doubt that man's greatness. I mean, he's unreal. Yeah, Frank, hot dog guy. He shortened it with the shortening of the time. Yeah, it's probably not going to fall. They'd have to add it back. Yeah, which they, they in theory they could just to see if the record of it. they could do that next year. Why did they? Well, change the only one who could break the record is Joey Chestnut. So yeah, no, someone got like sixty something a couple years ago. I remember, and that chick, the Asian chick, Sonia Thomas or whatever, she puts in like fifty something. She's very strong. <laughs> I I think this gets broken. Like in twenty twenty years, some 
people just evolve. Everybody said that to like what Clemmer was talking about. Everyone was saying that about Kobayashi. And yeah, Joey Kobayashi Chester. was doing like 40s, 50, like 74, 76 hot dogs. It's insane. <laughs> And Nathan's are no you know, fucking. It, it, it can fall. I would say mm. out of the, all the records on this one, that might be the like the uh, the easiest to, 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 to plug off. You might but. do it this summer at Coney Island, Frank. Right? <laughs> <laughs> How many do you think you could put down in the Coney Island? I can't con- eat fast. I, I I'll gag. Yeah, I think you, like Dave, if you trained, you're the fastest eater I've ever seen in person. I thought Big Cat. Him putting what he twelve twelve I think twelve that's insanely impressive I think uh, they're not small right they're, Frank and your jaw would get tired and everything you did the nine 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 challenge that wasn't that hard though but like, it's not like the it's not like the it's not like the grocery store Nathan's Anyone right can... Frank the one in that it's big yeah it did it did the, the Nathan hot dog is is a decent sized dog but it's a then. Uh, dog great, really good snap. So it's got great snap. I love Nathan's hot dogs. That's the one thing I'll give New York credit for is I think their hot dogs, their beef hot dog. I'm not talking about the toppings on it; just the hot dog itself is as good as ours. I love Nathan. Strong. That's why I roll dog. <laughs> but I do like Nathan's on the grill. Those are good. That's uh, how I've always had them my whole life. Yeah. Uh Chief, you're up. <laughs> I'll do Cy Young wins, 511 wins. Yep. I feel like you could just just go to Cy Young's Wikipedia and, and just pick out. Could records. have done twenty five of those. Yeah, whole draft on itself. Yeah, this is you know when you watch it's one of my favorite documentaries ever. It's my number one fall asleep documentary is uh, Ken Burns yep. baseball. Mm-hmm. And when you watch, I think it's like episode two or three of that, and it's just basically they spent a lot of time mm-hmm. on how dominant Cy Young was, and. Uh, and yeah, like the the records that they just break your brain because no one. It's like it's it feels like no one's even going to get to three hundred wins again. That's how it feels. Yeah. You that, know, was, that, 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 yeah, I think uh, I think we will never see another three hundred game winner. Yeah, I think we will. I think they're going to change the rules and and have less pitchers in the roster, so we do see. It Verlander's again. not far. Verlander's at like two forty some. I want to yeah. say. Yeah, but again, like now it's like twelve. Okay, Verlander's you, hurt. Verlander. <laughs> Verlander is it's starting to break down. He's starting to to, 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 to show age. He's already forty one. He's not gonna he's not gonna get another sixty wins. Is he hurt right now? Yes. Yeah. Guys guys just don't win twenty games a year anymore. So it's like even if he's sixty off, it's like it's it might take him five years to get, you know, a twelve wins a year. Twelve Verlander did get a later <laughs> start. It wasn't a regular until he was twenty three. What is Kershaw? I'm just saying, like, you know what I mean? Like before doing that game, then like yeah, you can find sixty wins somewhere. I think we will see another three hundred game. We, we we've been told so many different times we're never going to see a three hundred game winner again, and then we do. Um, it I think it's just obviously going to be a while. We might need a rule change at is, this point. Is it he, might be about it might. It's going to be fifteen to twenty years. No he, one's getting five hundred and eleven. You have to have twenty five no, 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 no. for twenty years, and you still are eleven short. Is Verlander chasing it? The, <laughs> His record to twenty years before anyone gets three hundred games is everyone who's pitched in the last five years. They're already. Out of the race, Verlander they is. Get, they cannot possibly get to, to 300 wins. So Ver- it had to be someone who's coming up now. Yeah. And now with, with rule changes and getting uh, the the wins, uh, they going back, trying to get back to where I. I if if I was running a team, I would. I, I the, the pitch count would be 125 to me. I think I, I think 125 is a more reasonable number. Get to the seventh inning, not the sixth inning and fly six and fly. BS. It's been going on the last uh, 20 years. Verlander sitting at 257. I thought it was after. less than that. I think he gets it. Has he said he's going to chase it? At this point, he kind of got to. I haven't heard him say that publicly, I don't think. Yeah. I mean, I'm he sure would he... need, uh, I think, if from realistically, he'd have to come back from injury fast and win 13, 14, uh, 13 to 15 games this year to even like think about it. Think about so that it. That gives yeah. him to like 270, say. Yeah. He still needs two more really good years, probably three more years. And yeah. he's forty-one. He is forty-one. Yeah, yeah. starts yeah. to get tough. Scherzer is thirty-nine. He's got two fourteen. And he's hurt too. He's yeah. done too. Yeah, he's, I, he's hurt more than I Verlander think, is. I think he's kind of cooked. Kershaw's at two ten. He's at. He's, his arm's yeah. done. Too. Yeah, he's, he's thirty-six years old. If Verlander doesn't do it, it's going to be a minute. And that's for three hundred, let alone five eleven. Yeah, five yeah. eleven. Right. Yeah, impossible. It's yeah. impossible. It's never going to be. Yeah. It's never going to be sniffed. There's only one Walter Johnson, who is you know same sort of era, 
is the only other guy with over 400. And he, mm-hmm. he was he was a little bit later, to be fair. Yeah. That's 20 years later, but he was probably episode he was probably episode three of uh, the baseball talk. Yeah, Ed Bird's baseball. inning three. Yeah. yeah, inning three. Sorry. Yeah, Walter. Could, he was a good one too. Uh, <laughs> Tank, you're up. Ed's being awfully coy this afternoon. All this right, morning. now. This is the record. It's 691 career wins for Martin Brodeur. Marty Brodeur. Now, first off, he played so many games in his career. He plays. He has most career games as a goalie at uh, 1,200. Or, uh, 1,266. Uh, Mark andre Fleury moved into second place this year. He is still 131 away and 40 years old. Yep. Martin Brodeur... Played till he was 42. And so the math shows you right there that it's that uh, that he had to play 20 years and uh, he won 691 games, losing one year to a full lockout and losing two half seasons to lockout. That's a good point, too. Yeah. And I mean, and guys, he made it to 691. He tried to trace 700 with St. Louis and didn't, it didn't quite happen. But I think Martin Brodeur is, uh, Goalie win record of six ninety one is a unbreakable record. I I agree, Frank, and and this is another like a sign of the times kind of thing where you know back in the day a starting you know even in the nineties so I'm saying back in the day when Brodeur was at his peak he was probably playing seventy seventy five games out of an eighty two game schedule. Uh, I I remember Kevin Weeks. Kevin Weeks was a backup goalie for them uh, about uh, fifteen years ago when he first moved into the Prudential Center. And Kevin Weeks would only play like fifteen games a year. Yeah. And now, now you see more and more teams, like you don't have these dominant, dominant yeah. classic Broder. It's like you yeah. kind of have a 50-50 You have a lot split. more teams doing the two-goalie rotation. Yeah. So, and goalies, even if you have a bona fide number one, they never play back-to-back days. So if you have a game on a game on Thursday and a game on Friday, the starting goalie is not playing on Friday. Yeah. That's and, stupid uh, to Broder me. Is actually commenting on it. it says he thinks that goalies today are soft. They are. They definitely. I are. think athletes as a whole are. Yeah. Why? That's. Forgive my ignorance. How physically taxing is it actually to play goalie? Less so than it used to be because you're getting like the equipment is so much better that. But it used to be in like the 80s. By the third period, the goalies pads, which are like leather with yeah. a spray on it, would be like completely waterlogged, and an extra 20 pounds you'd be lugging around. Oh, now they're I even thought of that. Now yeah. they're super lightweight. Um, you, they, they do play the butterfly, which is, you know, you're on your knees. It's a lot of mm-hmm. up down. So it's like, maybe it's, you're more, you have to be more athletic probably than you used and to Martin have. Bordeaux was basically like, he, the, yeah, like the, the butterfly goalie. That was like, totally. Yep. Him and, him was, and Patrick Waugh were like, the, they had this run of like French Canadians. Like Patrick Waugh was like the first one. And then Brodeur like perfected it. Martin Brodeur is also the best, probably puck handlers. Ever as a goalie, too. He's up there. So much so that they created a trapezoid to stop him. He also got his wife's sister pregnant, so he's Uncle Dad. No, 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 no. He actually no, – it wasn't his wife's sister. It was his uh, ex-wife's uh, sis, uh, brother-in-law. It was his ex, ex-wife's brother's sister. So it was his sister-in-law, and they're now married, and they've been married 20 years. Uncle Daddy. Uncle Daddy. Sounds like it had a happy ending. Yeah, all's well that ends well. Tank. <laughs> not, for the, not, not for his, uh, not for his former uh, brother-in-law and former wife. Yeah, yeah I could have, I could have sworn it was uh, like the, a pair of sisters. He got them both pregnant, but I guess I'll trust your. No, no, no. You, no, you would know sister, better than me. Sister-in-law it was his sister-in-law. Okay. So totally above board, Frank. That, that's fine. <laughs> Frank, hey, is he? Up? What can I say? <laughs> Frank, is he your favorite uh, player of all time? Like any sport? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Of any sport, uh, he's definitely in the top four. Definitely in the no top one four. on the eighty-six Mets or nothing. Uh, eighty-six Mets is a different type of. Uh, I, I mean, eighty-six Mets are so flawed. Personally, it's 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 it hurts a little bit that they never really reached the full potential. Yeah. So then, what is it like, Broder, Marino? Like, who else you got? Who's in your top four? Uh, Piazza. Okay. Piazza, definitely Piazza. And probably uh, the other Met would be uh, Gooden. Ah, okay. Clummer, you're up. 
Uh, we talk about Walter Johnson. So I'm going to do Walter Johnson uh, one year. 110 shutouts. Um, I don't think that will ever get broken. Uh, just, just for reference, Nolan Ryan pitched forever, had all the hitters. He had 63 shutouts in his career. The active leader right now is Clayton Kershaw. He is 15, and the record is 110. Yeah, no one's sniffing that. Yeah, it was actually, uh, that was on my radar too. Walter, dude. He was. He Big train. Loved, loved watching him. <laughs> yeah. It was great. Yeah. And he played for a terrible white uh, Nationals team most of his career. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Yeah, that's tough. They're stuck in those those lousy uh, Washington teams that the Yankees and A's just beat up. <laughs> uh, white Sox, Dave, you're up. I hate to double dip, but it's just such low hanging fruit that I kind of have to. I'm going to go with uh, Cy Young's loss record 316 career losses. It'll never ever come close to being sniffed because if you're losing that much, you're not you're you're not playing. You're you're cut. You're waived. You're DFA'd. You're gone. Though it'll just never ever ever be even remotely sniffed. And I'm sorry for such a boring pick. It's all right. I don't think it's even a good pick. Um, Jamie Moyer, <laughs> who had an up and down career, uh, he finished with 209 losses, and so that's uh, a big difference. That's a big difference than 300 plus. Number, but we're getting right? who else got like 289 career losses? No one, Ryan, right? Yeah, I think No one, Ryan is like two. No one, Ryan almost got 300 losses. But I'm even picking a guy. He was like a 500 a career pitcher, was it? Yeah, something like that. Like I'm picking a guy that's not even a Hall of Famer. That's more modern. That shows you how close you can you can come. And then you got Gertz, like uh, Burke Bylevin had a ton. Um, but of it's not well. that he needed a hundred plus more starts. It's that he needed a hundred plus more losses. Jamie Moyer didn't come close to that record. He would have needed to pitch another. I mean, he was probably getting what 15, 18 starts a year at the end of his career as like a spot Jamie, guy. Wait, but and he almost Jamie, threw till he was fifty. Well, true to some extent, but Jamie Moyer also did not start 30 games in a season for the third time until he was 34. He got an incredibly late start and still hit 209. Like, and like I said, Nolan Ryan, you want to do him? Like 200, he came awfully close. Like they were, they Yeah, were Nolan Ryan got to 292. I just That's looked it up. Tough. I didn't realize Nolan Ryan came that close. I had no idea. I knew he was like a 500-ish career pitcher, um, but I did not know he was that close. But, I mean, that it still – it will it, – even though a couple examples have gotten in the universe of that number, include well, Ryan was in the fucking exact ballpark of it, but it, it, it that will never be broken again. It will never be broken again. I I think it could be. I, I, mean, I think I, I, theoretically it could be. Changes, it won't be though. Uh, but uh, but we I, just I, talked I, about how we might not see a three hundred winner ever again, let alone a loser. And I think we will see a 300 game winner again. I, think I, I do. I do. Climber, I'm with you, man. I think we'll see it. A 300 I, I, loss? I, yeah, I think Dave's. It's potential. Yeah. Of course, it's it's with in the these realm of possibility. About, Dave, have no potential of happening. I think but I'm the no only one that has, has taken one that is a legit physical impossibility. <laughs> you know, it, uh, all of it, these it, you it, can. Yeah. Which I, I can see someone on the Mets losing 300 games. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. Yep. It's uh, it's not it's not out of the realm. Some of these are out of the realm. No one's going to have 464 innings pitched in a season. No one's likely going to have 110 career shutouts. But 300 losses. I feel like you would need someone to approach these records. They'd have to be truly ambidextrous. So it's like, all right, turn around, pitch with my other arm tomorrow. And, and uh, we talk about wins record. We talk about. Uh, Games record. We talk about Cy Young's records. There's a possibility that this record could have been a whole lot different for everyone if certain players were allowed to play. And I'm talking about the pitcher who might have been the best pitcher of all time. Who, when he by the time he got to the majors, he was 43 years old, and he was still pretty good. And I'm talking about Satchel Paige, who had a rubber arm, who pitched every other day. In the Negro Leagues. I mean, this guy pitched every other day. And he had, a, he had like pipe cleaner arms. But he was durable. And he, he would, nobody really knows exactly how many he won. But there's estimates. He, he won well over 400 games in there before uh, the, the color barrier is broken. And 
Uh, Satchel Page, if he was given a fair chance to play a full career, we might be called. We we uh, we might be giving out the uh, Satchel Page award every year. Hmm. Never thought about Satchel, did you, Dave? I didn't think about Satchel. Good point, Tank. Uh, fifth round, Dave. Lead us off. How do I want to go here? Um, I'll go with uh, Lance Armstrong's uh, tour defense, seven straight. Someone could do that. With the right drugs. With the right drugs, perhaps. I don't know. How, how nitpicky are they with the drug testing over in the bike biking world these days well all i know is that the tour de france is uh the tour de done because uh they 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 persecuted uh uh lance armstrong and there's one of the years where they tried where they supposedly and, and uh you could strip him in the times all you want he's still won seven in a row and uh one of the years that he's actually stripped and one of the years he won it the top 27 competitors were all on something. So the whole sport's dirty. So if one person's dirty, if, if everyone's dirty, then the whole sport's clean. It, it, it's, if, if everyone's doing it, then it's it's not then an nobody's advantage. Nobody's doing it, yeah. And basically, what they did was they, they, they cut their own nose off despite their face, and now the sport is just trash. And the Tour de France happens, and it, it, it might as well happen in, in – uh, and the Quad I, I, I don't know who's won the, any Tour de France in the last ten years, and I don't even know if they, they don't even like even talk about it anymore. I don't hear him talk about it. Yeah, it used to be one of those like summer. Yeah, you kind events. of tune in and yeah. check out what what Lance Armstrong. I, you would, you Every would watch July. it in. You would watch it before school. If you yeah, know, yeah, or, or before. Or I guess Pops it's in on. July, but I feel like I would always watch it in the morning before I like started the day, like flipping on. I, I very vividly remember him coming down in the like the last whatever leg. I forget what they call it. Um, and he was drinking champagne for his like victory lap while he was on the bike. Um, and it, like Frank said, though, like if if everybody's juicy, nobody's juicy. And same thing like Barry Bonds. Like, <laughs> oh, he was he was hitting those home runs on steroids. It's like those pitchers he was hitting the home runs off of were not on steroids. Them, Most not of all of them. them. Most of I them think are. the I think we need to forgive the steroid error. Just call it what it was. Like the dead ball error is a dead ball error. We steroid, had a steroid yeah. error. Hell yeah. And, and uh, it was the most entertaining baseball of all time, Frank. I don't know about that. Don't Give me all the – come on, man. It was – games. We had fucking – talking about uh, Mike Piazza, thing, we had blood rivalries yeah, between the Yankees, Red you know Sox. You bring back to baseball? Uppers. Uppers. Greenies. Yeah, bring back the greenies. I, those, those didn't go go away in the 80s. From what, I, from what I've heard, there was a couple guys on the 2005 White Sox that liked greenies. So. Well, they didn't go away until uh, – they didn't go away until five years ago. Yeah. yeah, they were in they were in baseball clubhouses in the sixties. Yeah, sixties, seventies. They were, 70s, they were 80s, handing them yeah. out like they were M and M's. Yeah, fucking Skittles. They're popping them like, like, like Skittles. Nazi soldiers. <laughs> I mean, the eighty six like, Mets they probably smoking got, meth couldn't constantly. possibly exist without their freaking greenies with the way they uh, party down and off the field. True, greenies, man. I'd I'd try a greenie. Yeah, why not? I don't even know what it is. What I is don't know it? either. I think it's. I think it's similar to like Adderall, right? Like a little green Tic Tac pill or something. Uh, I forgot what exactly it's called. It's, it's but it, it it was a it was a pill that was uh, like no dose. Like truck drivers used to take it all the time. Mm. Amphibians, amphibians. The first that's, week of my old job. Amphetamines. Amphetamines. Yeah, that's the word. Amphetamines. The first week of my amphibians are frogs, right? <laughs> yeah, I was wondering who's going. <laughs> I had, a, I had a truck driver arrested for meth possession at my old job when I was in logistics. That was fun. Uh, Clummer, you're up. Uh, Yogi Berra, 10 World Series rings. Uh, I don't think you're ever going to see. Oh, some- no, no. That's, a, that's a great fucking pick Clemmer. for the last round. Have you ever Frank. Corsetti? Corsetti had more than, than Berra? I mean, well, I'm not as a player only, not as a coach. Yes, Crosetti had every ring that Burra has plus play, rings as a player. Well, yeah, I'm only counting the player, though, Frank. Mm-hmm. We're talking – I'm not talking coaching. Players only. Berra has the most. He has 10. Uh, you know, think about Jeter. Jeter had, what, five? You know, like no one's come close in the last – you know, the four, since free agency. No one has come close, and I don't think it is possible for a team to control uh, a, a, a World Series run like that. I don't know I that we'll ever see an athlete with 10 championships in any sport again. I think it's... You need 11. Not 10. Yeah, 11. That's true. Right. 
What if, what if what if this happens? Okay. So for example, you got player A. He comes up. He's a young rookie. Contributes to a team winning a championship, and the team wants to yeah win another championship, so they trade him, and he becomes a prospect on our team. Two years later, that team becomes a juggernaut and wins two in a row. Then he becomes a free agent, signs with another team, and plays a 20-year uh, career where he's changed teams five, six times, and he's like, and he's a pitcher. He's a pitcher, like a relief pitcher, like just a contributor, not even like a star. A I think it's I, that's I, it would be someone like that. Yeah, yeah. That but, can, right, this whole this whole hypothetical. We've had free agency for over fifty years. No one has come close to this. But this I could see. No, I, one, no I one's gotten six. Someone, Juan Uribe be in the arm that you like, acquire at the end of the season that could win a t- that, that, that that goes team to team and becomes like a a, a, a mercenary right. in championships. I and he happens understand. to be the luckiest man in the world. He keeps happening to find himself on World Series winning teams in this playoff structure with so many extra rounds. I mean, Robert Ori, how many did Robert Ori get? Six? Yeah, Robert Ori is a perfect example. Six? Okay, yeah, perfect example. Six. Well, you need 11. Almost double. 11. Yeah. Yeah, but like to Frank's point, like Robert Ory did it with three different teams. Like there, it's not inconceivable. It's not inconceivable. It doesn't, is inconceivable. Well, Robert Ory has two with the two with the Rockets, three with the Lakers, and doesn't he have like a couple with the Spurs? With the, uh, Spurs. So that's like seven. Still need four uh, more. Steve Kerr also ended up with a with yep. a, uh, a bushel of uh, rings. He got a couple with the Spurs. Got a couple. With, got three with the uh, Bulls. And yes, we're naming guys who have three, four, five, six. You need eleven. Yeah, Robert Ory does have seven. Ory has seven, so he's four. And this is a different sport too. Yeah. Um, looking just at baseball, because I think NBA it's easier to go on a run because yeah, one player yeah. needs so much. I mean, uh, Bill uh, Bill Russell eleven and thirteen. <laughs> right. Yeah, the, M- M- the NBA is different. I'm talking specifically baseball. Henry you know Richard had eleven. No one's gotten six. Since free agency. Yeah, I think it's a good pick. I yeah. think it's a great pick. Tank, Henry, you're up. Okay. Uh, this is a rookie record. 276 strikeouts as a rookie by Dwight Good in 1984. First off, even though the, the rules are going to change a little bit, they're going to adjust make pitchers go longer, they'll never allow a pitcher to throw that many pitches to get 276 strikeouts, no matter how much the rules change. We said just, oh, he's a rookie. We got to we gotta limit his arm, the, the, the amount of pitches he throws. Just for that alone, that record is never going to be broken. Kerry Wood had a good run at it, but Kerry Wood is, ends up being a cautionary tale because he ends up blowing out his elbow at the end of the season and became like the symbol of, like, why you don't throw a pitcher that many innings. You're not worried about guys striking out more than ever, though? Strikeout numbers are higher than ever before. Yeah, but when the, 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 did we get back to when the last time someone struck out 300 batters in a, in a season? And uh, he had 276, so that's... Tank. That's going to be... I don't think, someone, I don't think someone's going to throw enough uh, pitchers to get 276 strikeouts. I mean, Strider had 281 in his second year. Yeah, I don't like this pick tank. There's guys that come around. Yeah, I just don't. See I wouldn't. It. I honestly would not be surprised if Skeens does it this year. This like is this is, very today. This as in today's opening day this year. I would not be surprised. Uh, he's, they, not they're stuck. No, I don't think Skeens either. It, but it, well, it don't need to be. it's because they're playing the goddamn service time manipulation bullshit with them. If they didn't, he absolutely right. could be. Look at the, how many pitchers have gotten one to strike as a rookie. Kodai Senga did it last year. It's only like about five or six. Well, Spencer Strider just did it. He had two hundred and two. As he looked at six year after that. But it's it. Uh, but it's it, it, it's rare. So it's only like it's only been like a handful of pitchers that have gotten two hundred strikeouts as a rookie. What did like uh, Jose Fernandez also, like, have? Frank, sorry, Dave. Like Yamamoto, like he could strike out two hundred and seven. Like you know, what I mean, I wouldn't be that shocked. Yamamoto That's... might suck. He I might... know, Frank, but you understand what I'm saying. Like, but he's not. He, they're not going to toy with his arm and like be as right. as cautious with him because he's he's older and and has the pro experience over in Japan. That's a good call too. You could have absolutely right. a you Darvish type pitcher come over from Japan sometime in the next handful of years. Frank, this pick stinks. 
<laughs> it no stinks. Frank. I like that Frank went with his heart. He went with his guy, Doc Gooden, one of his favorites. Got him on the yeah, board. Yeah, Frank, that's a rough one. Chief, you're up. I'm going with my heart as well. Real quick, if you're going for the championships record, though, Henry Richard got 11. There were only six teams. It it's it would be impossible for someone to get eleven Stanley Cup championships in this day and age just because there's there there we might the league might expand to thirty six. So you're gonna have that many more teams. Anyways, I'm going with my favorite Wayne Gretzky record. This is a record which I hope someone could break it because it would be electrifying. He had fifty goals in thirty nine games. Fifty goals in thirty nine games to start a year. This season, Austin Matthews has fifty nine and seventy. And then there's uh, Reinhardt and Hyman each have 51 for the for the year. Him getting, like, that's a career year for most guys. It wasn't even half a season. So that's something that was like the 80s, like goal scoring was up. It, it No one's really even come close to that. In my head, I know in theory it could be possible, but it just feels, it, it's like it can't happen. I don't, I feel like this isn't even in a Official. No, it's the fastest. To, no, it's like very. Oh, about it's the fastest of fifty. Fifth, like, fastest okay. of fifty. Yeah. So I was like, fifth, that's a random sample that you. No, no, no. It's fifth, okay. Fifty goals. Yeah, the like first a, thirty-nine games. Yeah. But it is. He ended up. I think that was the year he ended up with ninety-two, and he won every award. He had two hundred and twelve points. Like that. But that to me, it's like everything has to go right, and like we see guys like we're in, <laughs> we're in, we're in a great era of the NHL in my opinion. Um. And guys aren't even coming close. Like they, like no one. Fifty goals in thirty nine games is impossible. Austin Matthews, Austin Matthews sniffing around sixty for the year. Like that never, like that hasn't happened very often in the last forty years. So the fact that he even Ovechkin, uh, Ovechkin's had maybe sixty, maybe once, maybe once or twice. Stamkos, I know, did it once, but it's it just doesn't it doesn't happen. So to get fifty and half Salani. Solani had seventy three as a rookie. That's a that's a record for goals scored by a rookie. I think that was like nineteen ninety one, eighty nine, something like that. Ninety two, ninety three. Ninety two, ninety three. Okay. Well, he had sixty five and oh seven, oh eight, and that is I think, uh, high. I think Bedard does it. No, he's not. He if won't. not, Edie's got a shot. <laughs> what? I would love it if Bedard I'd... would do it, but it, it just doesn't seem. I like the era is just so different. Bedard's gonna be good, but he's gonna be more like uh online of like a Jack Hughes type player. I think <laughs> I think he'll be better than Jack Hughes. No, no. You don't realize how good Jack Hughes is. No, I do. I do. I love Jack Hughes. Jack Hughes is great. Bedard Bedard Bedard's gonna be a little a, a little bit better. Like they'll they'll probably have a battle for uh an MVP at some point, Frank. We'll see you in the Stanley Cup finals in a couple of years, Frank. <laughs> How about that? If the Devils ever learn how to get players that have any like uh, balls and uh, guts and uh, actually they gotta, they gotta hit somebody, they you gotta, know, and no more Thomas Nozick. They got to bring back Miles Wood. I miss Miles Wood. I know, I know, he's a good player, but yeah, I think I think I was kidding too. I know, yeah, I know. But, uh, yeah. Good pick. All right, to me, uh, Mister Relevant between a few, but. And I know this will be argued, and I hate to do it to the two guys over there, but 14 division titles in a row is insane. Braves? The Braves. Yeah. That's insane. That I, shouldn't happen. Yeah. It feels like there should be rules oh, in place where that now, crazy. Now, there should be a gigantic asterisk on that. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> Give it to me, Frank. They never got first one. First off, the first three of those division championships were in the National League West. It should still count, though, Frank. The divisions were bigger back then. Secondly, now you're talking. They were not going to win a division in 1994. They were not going to win a division in 1994. That was the Expos year, right? Yep. Yes. It was the White so Sox year, Frank. The record, you started from 1995 forward. The, the 1994 <laughs> Expos, to my, opinion, to my opinion, are the Eastern Division champions that year. The season ended. They should be confronted with winning a division championship. I agree with you, Frank. To me, the Montreal all the other records are counted. Ended, the season ended. The, Mo- the season ended. The strike killed everything. The Montreal Expos were the nineteen ninety four National League Eastern Division champions. They won the division by six games, by the way. They were up six games. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What I don't know that, if they would have held on. Was, I don't know if they wouldn't have held on. But the Montreal Expos, to me, 
Strike, no strike, are the division champions in 1994. They should give that to them. They uh, they took everything else from them. They took the team from them. They took everything, they the heart and soul out of Montreal. The, 19, the 1994 season, the Montreal Expos, to me, are the division champions. If if Montreal wins that World Series, are they still in Montreal? Yes. yes. They would have built a new stadium. What, what would the number have been if the Expos cut that into that 14? What? Uh, what would 11. there? Oh, if you started at ninety five, yeah, eleven. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Way, much more in reach. I also don't know if it's out of reach entirely. So there's going to be expansion in baseball before the end of the decade, and you might see this been proposed. I don't know if it's going to happen or not. Four divisions of four teams each. That is going to fourteen happen. division. It gets a little easier to win fourteen in a row than with a five. Yeah. That is going. That is going to happen. A hundred percent going to happen. And baseball is going to go to 18 playoffs. Do you like that? I don't know if I like it. I like expansion. I, I do like I, expansion. I like expansion. I like you know even divisions. Yeah. Because, because, because you know how every year the wild, the, the, the two teams that have the buys are saying that they, they're put at a disadvantage? That's just going to be baseball's going to go, well, the only way to fix it is eight teams in. Yep. And within five years, it's going to be eight teams in the playoffs. I like I, I think that's decade. fine. I like four team divisions though if they really shake it up if they give me Cubs, Sox, Cardinals, Brewers. No. <laughs> you know. We cannot change American National League. No. I, already, I, you be, already I agree. Have. I will fight you already that already have. Fiber of my bean. It has to stay American National League. Frank, Tell him, Frank. Yankees, Go. Mets, Red Sox, Phillies. That's a fucking awesome no. division. No. It waters it down to the point that you the rivalry loses its luster, I think. The, the rivalries are dead as it is anyways, Dave. Yeah, but it, fair. You, absolutely you, you, fair. You do fine having Mets, Phillies, uh, and the Northeast, the Nationals, and the 214 there. I mean, there's no problem with that. And then you want to talk about, uh, I saw the proposal. The Braves division would be uh, the expansion team in Charlotte, the expansion team in uh, Nashville, and uh, no, the uh, team they raised in the Braves. It would be like a, a free pass and they'd be playoffs every fucking year. <laughs> no, they're not going to put the two expansion teams. The, the, the Braves are going to win their own, the, break their own record here. Those fuckers. Uh, let's, let's do some honorable mentions uh, quickly, and then we could vote someone off. Uh, Frank, you got any honorable mentions? You know what I noticed is that there's no well, – very few football. This is just how football offenses are exploding now. Mm -hmm. So that's why football really wasn't uh, represented on here. <clears throat> but I'm going to throw a football one in here. Nobody's ever going to uh, join it all. The, the, the Patriots' f failure in Super Bowl 42 and the fact that they're going to add an 18th game to the schedule soon. It's 17 now. It's going to be 18. Nobody, but nobody will ever, ever <laughs> go unbeaten through the playoffs and regular season. Miami Dolphins, <laughs> perfect deal. Population one forever. Extra game. No one will ever case. score 2,000 yards or rush for 2,000 yards in a 14-game season ever again. Well, that yeah, well, 14-game season. but 14-game season. Who did that, Frank? Uh... Orenthal James Simpson. That is correct. Only guy to ever do that. I got Yeah, he had a good cut when he was running. Oh, <laughs> oh right. I get it. <laughs> got him. Uh, I don't think anyone's ever going to sniff Brett Favre's interception record. 336 interceptions. You got to play for a long time. You got to be fucking reckless, and you got to have a like a long leash. Like I feel like right. Josh Allen. Leash. I don't think so. I yeah, know. Her cousins could do it. I mean, <laughs> that guy has more turnovers than a French bakery. <laughs> uh, Clemmer, you got any? Yeah, I have one. The football as well. Uh, the Ravens, uh, points allowed. I didn't, I used 16 game seasons and above. I don't want to do 14 or the strike year. Um, but uh, 165 points allowed for the season. I don't Ten know if anyone's going to touch that anytime soon. Um, just the offenses just keep growing and growing. Right. Kirk Cousins has 110 interceptions for his career. Would it Favre? 336. Yeah, nah, that's probably a good call. That that's might crazy. not ever get sniffed. I thought he was a very overrated quarterback. A three-time MVP. I understand his accolades. Of course I, you I feel that way. I, the Bears fans. That's, I 
think was, that Aaron Rodgers is the greatest quarterback I've ever laid eyes on. Aaron Rodgers is definitely. I hate he's barf. a fucking cunt. Hey, hey, be but, nice to my quarterback. I was hoping, to, I was hoping that he'd run for uh, vice president DP? with uh, RFK Jr. No, Frank. <laughs> Let me let me have a nice year, Frank. Let me enjoy my Jets. Stop. Uh, Gosh, I that, want a seventy. That would have been the greatest, the greatest thing All ever right. happened to the Jets. Yep, Josh Allen a seventy-eight. Okay, so he could he could sniff around. Uh, could have Devin Hester's return number with the kickoff rule changes. We'll yeah. see what this new. There's no place in the league for <laughs> right? White Sox Dave anymore. Yeah, they <laughs> eliminated me completely. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see if that impacts or changes it. But that feels untouchable now. And then uh, Glenn Hall, Mr. Zero, uh, consecutive games. He played 502 consecutive games as a goalie. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of – and uh, you want to talk about equipment back then. Goalies uh, goalies were just getting masked back then. Yeah. They were thin equipment. I mean, yeah, Gump Orsley, who played his entire career without a mask. That's yeah. Crazy. That is that. Insane. That's insane. That's fucking insane. And there are like Crazy. rumors that Bobby Hull could shoot the puck 110 miles an hour. Yeah, like that's insane. I mean, you he, get a little redirect, and you get that's. Oh yeah, funny. he he says that he would miss a few high on purpose early in games, just as like chin music to like just rattle yeah. him a little yeah. bit. I love that. I love that. Nolan Ryan seven no hitters. Celtics eight straight NBA titles. That's all I have. Um. I had Muggsy Bogues' height. I don't know if that'll ever be broken. <laughs> um, and then this is one I it was stupid, but um, Moses Walker, Moses Fleetwood Walker, being the first black player to ever play Major League Baseball um, prior to segregation in Major League Baseball, and uh, obviously that can't be broken again. Oh, here's one that can't be broken. It's not really a record. Yeah, it's not. here's here's it's not a record that can't be broken. Kind of is. No, it's not. I was figuring out a way how to make it funny, and that's why I brought it up in honorable mention. Here's, here's my here's better than Muxy Bogues. Eddie Goodell. Yeah. 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 That was a that was a. I hate those fucking assholes, the White Sox. No one cares about seeing a midget playing baseball. Everybody wants to see a fucking. That wasn't the White Sox. That was the St. Louis Browns. That was it. I thought that was the White Sox with Charles Comiskey. No, no, he that always was the did. Browns before you owned the uh, White yeah, Sox. Yeah, the Browns. I thought, but Charles yeah, Comiskey think, always did person, stupid gimmicky shit like that too. And it's like just put winning teams on the field. That's how you get player or fans to come in the to the games. Stop the gimmicky shit. For some reason, nights. I thought that was like White Sox. How about that disco demolition night? <laughs> yeah, I. I, I wish I was alive. For Hell that. of a night. Hell of a night, Frank. All right, I'm going to read them off. But you know, well, Bill Vec did. You, and you, Bill Vec, yeah. Vec, you, might yeah. Wanna, uh, you, you talk about him, that uh, you hate him, but you know, he's the one that started give, giveaways. He started promotion. Yes. He helped, That's... He helped jazz up the ballpark experience. He had a little, so he had some misses with uh, Eddie Goodell and uh, Disco Demolition, but he also invented the exploding scoreboard. He invented. Uh, he put names on the back of uniforms. He, he was the first to do that. Yep. He, my he dad was, said uh, when he, he was, was growing innovator. up, and and before before he brought the uh, he owned he owned three different teams over his, his career. He owned the uh, the Indians, he owned the Browns, and he owned the White Sox. He wanted to buy the Phillies in 1943, and uh, he was about to, he was getting close to buying them. He also his father was with the Cubs, and he was he came up with the idea of the Ivy. And Bill Vec wanted to buy the Phillies in 1943. And it got leaked that his plan was to stock the Phillies with Negro League baseball players, and they prevented him from buying the team. He wanted to break the color barrier before anyone else did. Damn, that's a great little history. I, never, I was gonna say never knew that. Nope. I, I mean, he was talking about promotions. The only thing I got on that, which will not add to the story much, I don't think. But my dad, when he was growing up, he grew up down the street from the old Comiskey. When he was like really young, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, or whatever, and prior to games, they would sprint to be the first in the stadium because Bill Vec would hide like five, ten, twenty dollar bills under the flip up seats, so all the kids would get there, the neighborhood kids, and go and flip up all the seats to get all the cash as fast as they could. And Bill, later and on, Bill they Vec would and, sneak pony kegs into the stadium. They did that too. Bill Vec wasn't that independently wealthy, so he had to keep selling his teams because yeah. he'd run out of money. And uh, after he sold the White Sox to Reinsdorf in nineteen eighty. Three. No, no, 1980. There, uh, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. 
Bowls were 83, I think. Don't question it. So yeah, I, I should was, stop uh, doing that. So he spent the last years of his life going to every Cub game, sitting in the bleachers, and he was a uh, he lost his leg by then. He would just sit there with uh, his prosthetic leg propped up, shirtless, sunning himself in the bleachers of uh, Wrigley Field in his last, uh, his last days. Beautiful. What a guy. That's a good way Beautiful. to go. That's a good way to go. All right, so I'm going to read them off. Then we'll vote someone out of here who you thought had the worst draft. White Sox, Dave, Cy Young, 749 complete games. Cromartie, 109.9 yard return. Wilt, 48 and a half minutes per game. Cy Young, 316 career losses. Lance Armstrong, seven straight Tour de Francis. Clemmer, Wilt, 50.4 points per game. Johnny Vandermeer, back-to-back no hitters. Ed Walsh, 464 innings pitched. Walter Johnson, 110 shutouts. Yogi Berra, 10 World Series rings. Tank, Gretzky, NHL points. Ricky Henderson, 1,406 stolen bases. Ty Cobb, 366 batting average. Martin Brodeur, 691 wins. Dwight Gooden, 276 rookie Ks. Chief, Gretzky, 1963 assist record. Uh, P. Rose, 4,256 4, career hits. Nolan Ryan, 5,714 strikeouts. Cy Young, 511 wins. Gretzky, Gretzky, 50 goals in 39 games. Eddie, UCLA basketball, seven straight titles. Joe DiMaggio, 56-game hit streak. Cal Ripken's Ironman streak. Joey Chestnut, 76 hot dogs. Braves, 14 con- consecutive division titles. Hmm. So you're voting for the worst. The worst. All right, I got mine. Frank, who you got? Uh, who was the last one? Me. That's, that's the last. I mean. You don't like Braves. the strike pick, yeah. The Braves and the uh, Lance Armstrong, just the fact that those are just like so asterisk ridden. Oh no, that was that was Dave. Dave had the Lance Armstrong. Dave. Eddie had Eddie had Ripken, Chestnut, and the Braves. It was his last three. Clummer, what do you got? I got Dave as well. Um, assuming Frank has Dave, but I'm going with Dave regardless for those those two asterisks. I think Frank is me, but it's all we'll do one and one, and then uh, what do you? I'm got? the only one with records that literally cannot be broken. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't I'm like the, I didn't I'm, like I'm, that. I didn't like that, so I voted for you too. Who, I don't care about who Cromartie. had the Braves. Who had the Braves? Then? It's unbreakable records. I went with the exact definition. No, but who had the Braves division? Eddie. I did. I did. All right, then I'm sorry. I'm going with Eddie then, Dave. I'm sorry. We're just swapping I'm, I'm votes. Into, uh, the back and forth. Two for yeah, Eddie, Braves two for Eddie, Dave. one for Dave. Because you see, you, you, you throw the Expos in there, it changes everything. Sounds like we just got salty Met fans on the podcast today. You do. <laughs> and guys that are salty that I'm following the rules. Okay, what do you got, Dave? I'm going to go with Chief. Actually, that, that's I, a spike that's not, I had it written in already. I actually. I had Chief too. So we got two. So v2. Chief has to change his vote to either me or him. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Ed. <laughs> <laughs> no, you should no have gone with yourself. All right, I'm going. Uh, all right, guys, thank you. You guys are encyclopedias of knowledge. This was a you a, really are. A, a, that was a, very yeah, impressive. History lane. Frank, I could listen to you talk baseball all day long. You should you should do like your own Frank the Tank version of of uh, the nine innings. Clumber two. Yeah, Frank, both of you. Well, both Frank you guys. Is yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. And it's not just baseball with Frank. He can do football. Yeah, hockey. yeah. It's it's. We went on a road trip impressive. to Miami uh, for opening day last year. And I learned so much in that trip about ho- I don't know a lot about hockey. Like he, Frank is a walking encyclopedia. People see him rant and stuff, which are, all right, I get. Like <laughs> he is such a wealth of he even knows '80s pop music. Frank is an encyclopedia. Talk to me what? about Whitney Houston, Frank. Newark legend. <laughs> She's from Newark. Yes. Did not know that. There you go. There you go. I right, appreciate you guys. We'll see you next time. Happy opening day, fellas. I wish I I had better vibes from my side of the Zoom, but happy opening day. Happy opening day to you guys, too. They, you you play in the worst division of baseball. You never know. Don't, I'm sick of hearing that they have for fucking two decades and they've never done anything. By the way, here's a a bold prediction I'm making. Not one team. That means the Twins, the Guardians, the Tigers, the Royals, and the White Sox, especially the White Sox. Not one team in that division is going to finish with a winning record. That's not crazy. I don't like that.